Welcome back. You are watching News Center. Governments have a duty to fulfill and uh, also consult and convey objectives to all stakeholders before implementing a policy. That's the word coming in from Arun Venkatraman, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Global Markets and Director General of the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service. Speaking on India's import authorization policy for ICT, he added that the U.S. government fully supports American companies in making in India, but tariffs should not be a disincentive to manufacturing. I caught up with Mr. Venkatraman exclusively and began by asking him about the deliverables he's seeking from the Indian government as far as the commercial dialogue goes and the relationship on critical and emerging technology. So let me begin first by noting where we are in this bilateral relationship. This is a historic moment in this relationship. And why is that? We are emerging from the pandemic. We have discovered a number of vulnerabilities as a result. We are also facing critical threats to our economic and national security. These are challenges that the United States and India share. And I think what that has done, it has created this unique moment in history where our ability to fulfill the potential that has always been there is now greater than ever. Uh, and I think what we are doing here today is trying to seize that moment. We're trying to take advantage of the energies and the, the uh, abilities of our private sectors to strengthen the, uh, the collaboration between those private sectors, not just for the United States and India to uh, grow our economies, but ultimately for the United States and India to partner together with the energies of our private sectors to create solutions for the world and to create better opportunities for people elsewhere. Right. Uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, India's recent import uh, curbs on laptops, computers, and tablets. Now, this has been converted today to an import authorization system, at least till one year. And then the government will take a call on uh, whether those import curbs need to be put in place, those restrictions need to put in place. But even now, if you have to take import authorization for bringing in these goods into India, uh, how do you see this requirement? Yes. So, as with any economic policy that the Indian government uh, implements, we always see it through the prism of how can it enhance the opportunities for greater collaboration from, with American companies and Indian companies. And so when we look at this policy, we know that the Indian government is still thinking through what that policy looks like uh, and is thinking about changes to that policy. We are interested in working with the Indian government to see how those changes can strengthen American collaboration. But also, to be clear, we in the United States are 110 percent behind efforts by the Indian government to ensure the security and resiliency of its supply chains. And as the Indian government takes appropriate steps to ensure that trade is increased with trusted partners, we would like to think that the United States is, of course, the most trusted partner for India, and we are committed to helping India ensure that its supply chains uh, remain connected to trusted partners. But do you also feel that uh, announcements like these on import curbs, import authorization norms, uh, do they send mixed signals to businesses? Is, has that been your uh, message to the government as well? Our message to the government has been, uh, let's find ways to clearly articulate what you are trying to achieve and what the, uh, what the opportunities are to achieve that goal. Uh, American industry is fully supportive of India's desire to keep um, its uh, supply chain secure and resilient. So there's no daylight between the objective that the Indian government wants and what the U.S. industry supports. I think we all, as governments, um, have a duty whenever we impose any regulations to fully consult with all of our stakeholders before we adopt those policies, and in this case, particularly with industry, and to make sure that we are communicating what the objectives are, what the security concerns are, and how our policies are narrowly tailored to address a, a particular security objective. Right. Uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, Tesla. Uh, Tesla has been negotiating with the Indian government. We've been very keen for them to come and set up manufacturing in India. Could you give us a sense of where talks are between Tesla and the Indian government? Well, look, I would have to leave that to Tesla, of course. What I will say in general, though, is uh, we are strongly supportive of uh, American companies contributing to the Indian economic growth story, as they always have. We are proud of the fact that uh, America is India's largest investor and that our companies have been able to create over a million jobs here, and we look forward to having them create a million more, mm. uh, whether that's with Tesla or with First Solar or with Micron. 
Uh, we are proud that American companies see the opportunities here in India and welcome the uh, government's efforts to help American companies seize those opportunities. Uh, what we believe is that Tesla wants some time uh, to, uh, to import at lower duties before it can set up manufacturing because it wants to test the market. Uh, what is your overall view on reducing tariffs? Are there certain sectors, including <coughs> automobiles, where you're seeking a tariff reduction? If we don't speak about companies, but specific sectors. Yeah, what I would say is, uh, you know, as part of our efforts to support uh, the Honorable Prime Minister's Make in India initiative, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we were working with the Indian government to think about what are the different tools that we as governments have to support American companies uh, being part of that manufacturing uh, renaissance here in India. We think one of those tools, of course, is making sure that as you look at your trade policy, how can you ensure that inputs in particular are not tariffed in ways that raise the cost of doing business for manufacturers here and ultimately create a disincentive mm. to manufacturing. Uh, we are fortunate that um, our counterparts in the, in the Indian government do understand that and I think uh, they're looking at this holistically to see what are the ways they can support manufacturing. Uh, we, we know that with the PLIs and, uh, and other tools, the government has taken significant steps uh, in this regard. I think tariffs are one piece of it that they're considering as well. Right. Uh, my final two questions. Uh, what about uh, the IPEF, uh, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework? Has there been any progress made with negotiations with India on the trade pillar of IPEF? Yes. Yeah, so, um, as, as you know, we, the IPEF from the very beginning was designed to be a flexible instrument. Each partner will decide what they, when they, where they, which pillar they participate in uh, and how. Uh, I don't want to get into the specifics of those negotiations, but I w will say that India has been a supremely constructive partner mm -hmm. in IPEF. Uh, across the board. We w have welcomed their participation from the very beginning and we are proud to have them as a partner helping us move to conclusion. Uh, and in fact, uh, I would note that I IPEF was launched just about a year and a half ago and in that extremely short period of time we have already substantially concluded negotiations on the supply chain pillar. India was key to allowing us to get to an outcome in that supply chain pillar and now we look forward to making similar progress in the other pillars of IPEF, including trade. Uh, we, in fact, there is a round on negotiations going on right now in KL, mm. uh, and we look forward to that making significant progress. The IMEC corridor, has it been derailed? Can it still take off because of the Israel-Hamas war? Yeah, uh, I think I would not say it has been derailed. Uh, look, let's be clear on what's going on in the Middle East right now. Hamas has single-handedly committed a terrorist act that has really not only hurt Israeli civilians, uh, but has really hurt Gazans as well. Uh, and we are strongly supportive uh, of Israel taking an appropriate response in that respect. Because as you know, the United States is committed to combat terrorism in all its forms, regardless of the actor. Uh, and so we stand behind the efforts to do that. But let's also be clear, we want, we want to ensure, as Secretary Blinken has said, that the actions that are taken there in the, in the context of this conflict do not spill over into other areas. Yeah. So as we do that, we are conscious that we are committed to continuing to work on IMAC. And in fact, uh, as Prime Minister Modi himself said earlier this week, we take the lead from him and he has made very clear uh, the Indian government's desire to move full steam ahead and we support that very much. All right, uh, so that was the U.S. Assistant Secretary for Commerce saying that India must clearly articulate what it wants to achieve with the policy on uh, ICT products. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News Center. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.